Right, well, we're going to go over to the sideboard where Andrew Shroud is waiting with Bob Huang, and he'll tell you the story about how he cruised his way through the top eight. Hey guys, Andrew Shrout, I'm here on the sideboard. I'm sitting with your legacy open champion, Bob Wong. Congratulations, Bob. Thank you. I know you said earlier you were in the hunt for uh, something shiny. Yes, that is why I'm here. I'm working uh, at 9 a.m. tomorrow and I have a four-hour drive ahead of me, so. Okay, but we had, Worth to, it, though, I had think. to stick, ar stick yeah. around to earn a trophy. Yeah. Uh, put up an impressive finish with uh, a deck that I don't, I don't think a lot of people saw coming. So tell me a little about how you, how you arrived at this deck. Sure. Well, uh, I guess first off, um, Carson Cotter wrote an article in Star City saying how insane Treasure Cruise was. And when I first saw the card when it was spoiled, I was like, maybe? Sure. It costs eight? And Carson was like, no, no, you gem four. And I like, I respect Carson's opinion, so I went okay. ahead and started testing a variety of different Treasure Cruise decks. Uh, came upon this one, uh, actually I was testing on Crocatrice. So I was testing, um, I don't know, like blue, white, red, or bug or something. Okay. And someone was playing blue, red with Swiss beers, and I thought it was really interesting. So he gave me his list. Uh, okay. I refined it a little bit. But uh, yeah, I like the list a lot. Treasure Cruise is insane. It's like the mirror breaker for all the fair decks. And then this particular deck comes out of the gates really fast. Like, I just raced a Grizzlebrand. Who does that? That was sweet. <laughs> I got to watch it. I was sitting right there. Yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. All right, so uh, kind of the, the two headliners here, uh, of course, the, the new cards. Uh, you, you mentioned Treasure Cruise and, and Monster Swift here briefly, but uh, let's, let's, let's talk a little bit about each. Sure. Uh, Treasure Cruise, of course, that was the card that, that Karsten was saying, like, this is, this is nuts, this is going to break things wide open. Yeah. Um, this is certainly one home for it. Uh, like, how much of an influence do you think is going to have on Legacy overall going uh, forward? I mean, so I've played, I was testing for this event, testing for um, GP New Jersey as well. Mm -hmm. So I played like upwards of one to 200 games with Treasure Cruise. And it's just like so dumb. I think it's an auto four of all the Delver decks. Okay. I think in like more mid rangey decks like Esper and Deathblade, maybe you only run two or three. Um, but it's just like, it's a mirror breaker. It, it's just like, one person has three more cards. Like, that's <laughs> it's not magic, that's like vintage. Okay, yeah. fair enough, strong endorsement. Yeah. Uh, and then Monastery Swift Spear, uh, kind, of, kind of the unsung hero then. Uh, yeah, he how, was how good. How impressive has that card been for you? He was good. Uh, you know, people compare him to Goblin Guide. I feel like he's more like Tarmogoyf. I was using sure. the Tarmo die, yeah. uh, so that was fun. Uh, you know, usually he's like around a 3-4, but you know, you can get him up to 5-6 if you, if you uh, fire off a Treasure Cruise. Okay. So, yeah. It was All real right. sweet. Well, uh, an impressive showing. Congratulations again, Bob. Yeah, thank you. Patrick, Matthias, back to you guys.